Today on Rock the Park. Oh, it looks like Colton sees something. We're braving the frigid north. Woo! We're back, baby! Where we'll need lots of layers. Oh, yeah. Endless patience. <laughs> and persistence. That's the sound you like to hear. All in pursuit of our country's most elusive predator. This is Voyager's National Park. Oh, whoa, that's fur. And it all starts right now. I'm Jack Stewart. This is the real deal. And I'm Colton Smith. These Man. are mountains. We've been buddies for years. Always in search of the next adventure. Dude, what was that? We share a passion for our national parks and other wild places around the world. Oh my God. Man. Heading off the beaten path, pushing our limits, and experiencing nature's best kept secrets. Here we go. <laughs> it's how we rock the park. Experiences in nature rival the sound of wolves howling in the night. But to experience this, you have to be willing to travel way outside of your comfort zone. Ooh, chilly. Nice and chilly. <laughs> For us, the journey begins on the edge of a massive frozen lake with temperatures dipping well below zero. It is the dead of winter, and we are back in our home state of Minnesota, about to head into Voyagers National Park to experience it in a whole new light. Voyagers is a remote wilderness of just over 318,000 acres, much of which is water. It sits in the far reaches of northern Minnesota on the border with Canada. We know Minnesota, and one thing about winter, especially in Voyagers National Park, is you're guaranteed a couple things. Freezing temperatures, a lot of snow, and really not a lot of people. Hanging outside in this weather may not sound like a lot of fun, but it's the perfect environment for spotting a famous local resident, the endangered gray wolf, or as they're called in forested areas, the timber wolf. That's our mission for this trip. We're gonna be trekking out deep into the wilderness and hopefully in the calm and in the stillness, we'll be able to locate some of these majestic creatures. There are nearly 3,000 gray wolves in Northern Minnesota. That's more than all the other states in the lower 48 combined. Here in Voyagers, scientists have identified six to eight different packs, totaling nearly 50 wolves. Researchers from the Voyagers Wolf Project, a collaboration between Voyagers National Park and the University of Minnesota, with other support from the Minnesota Environment and Natural Resources Trust Fund, Van Sloon Foundation, and Bell Museum, captured this wolf footage. There's no doubt about it. This is going to be the true Northern Minnesota winter experience. We're hauling tents and fishing poles and our journey today will take us 25 miles into the park, making our way through four different lakes to a campsite on Lake Cabotogama, a hot spot for wolf activity here in Voyager. Yeah, woo, we're back baby! Along the way, we'll be keeping our eyes peeled for any signs of wolves or other wildlife. The beauty of Minnesota in the wintertime is the fact that all of these lakes and waterways turn into highways for snowmobiles, but it also does the same for the animals that live here. I'm really hoping that we're gonna spot some deer out here, but maybe we'll get lucky and spot a moose too. You never know. The moose is Minnesota's largest mammal. They spend their winters foraging for willow, birch, and aspen twigs, but they also use their large hooves to scrape snow from areas where they could find mosses and lichens to eat. Right now, we're riding on about 18 inches of ice. So this ground, it's very solid. There really isn't any risk to us right now, but we still have to stay on the trails. The trails we're following weave between lakes and islands in a rugged landscape carved out by glaciers during the last ice age. We're following a route the namesake voyagers traveled centuries ago. The voyagers were French Canadian fur trappers, and they started coming to this area 
in the late 1700s, early 1800s. Now, Voyagers National Park, out of the big 59 national parks, is the only one named after a group of people. The Voyagers spent their summers transporting fur and supplies more than 3,000 miles between the Northwest Territories of the U.S. and Canada. We have one advantage to being here in winter. Ooh, it looks like we're approaching a portage. In the summertime, it can be quite tough because you got to pick up the canoe, put it over your head, and carry all your supplies. Well, right now, all we got to do is just ride on through. A series of portages leads us back in time to a place called Grassy Bay. So this cliff behind us has some of the oldest rock on Earth, and it tells the story of how this area was created. Voyager sits right on the southern tip of the Canadian Shield, which is a massive dome of volcanic bedrock. So what happened is volcanoes erupt, they deposit all this ash, layer after layer, it forms into some of this rock. Then the glaciers came through here, scraped it out, and now what we're left with are some of these rocks that date back 2.7 billion years. Voyagers is a place where obviously the water gets a lot of attention. The park is over 40% water, but the rock is just as fascinating and tells such an incredibly deep story. We've been traveling for nearly two hours and haven't seen another soul. Same goes for wildlife, but Colton is determined. I gotta tell you guys, being in the elements like this, looking for any sign of wolves that we possibly can, it's exhilarating. It might be my favorite thing to do in the world. Jack, see the deer in the distance? Oh yeah. Wow. White-tailed deer have a keen sense of smell and hearing, and they can run up to 30 miles per hour when they have to. So can their predators. Oh, oh, whoa. That's fur. Oh my gosh. We're braving the cold in Voyager's National Park in northern Minnesota, trying to catch a glimpse of one of North America's most elusive predators, the endangered gray wolf. No signs of them yet. There's only about 30 to 50 wolves in the National Park. And believe it or not, that's actually a pretty large number for gray wolves. Wolves travel and hunt in family packs of six to nine. They're very territorial and are known to mark their turf with scat and urine. We're keeping our eyes peeled for any of those signs. Ooh, it looks like Colton sees something. Gotta pull over. So what do you think you saw? I'm not sure what it is, but you see up here how all the snow is discolored? Oh, oh, whoa. That's fur. Oh yeah, it is. That is all fur. Oh my gosh. So this is crazy. We've got two different spots here where clearly something was attacked. You've got fur, definitely blood. This thing right here was attacked by a wolf. And obviously there's snow on top of it right now, but we can still see a lot of it. So it was fairly recent. Hunting like this is essential for keeping both wolf and white-tailed deer populations at sustainable levels. It also provides much needed food for scavengers like ravens and bald eagles. And so what this means for us is there are wolves in the area. And this is really exciting news for us because right now we're not too far away from our campsite. So just because they're not around right now, they're probably comfortable here. This is where they call home. We're in the right spot to see them. Tonight, we'll try to catch a glimpse of these guys as they come out to hunt. But with temperatures dropping well below zero, setting up camp is our top priority right now. So from what I hear, this is a pretty nifty tent. Now Colton picked this bad boy up. He's pretty stoked to set it up, but he's the only one who knows how to do this. No, this might be interesting. You could have come and listened to the instructions too, you know. Hey, this is your tent, man. <laughs> <laughs> I am very excited about this. Now, this is old school. It's a canvas tent. It does a great job at keeping heat in, which when the temperatures tonight could get to be negative, 15 or 20, keeping heat in is going to be quite key to our comfort. So what do we do first? All right, so let's just, let's flatten it out basically. Canvas tents are heavy and take longer to set up, but they're well worth the effort. Oh, man, it's spacious in here. This is great. The best part, a chimney chute for a wood-burning stove. 
Setting up a wood stove is making sure that you've got everything properly spaced from the edge of the tent, making sure that the chimney is fed correctly. Basically, you don't want anything to get so hot that it catches on fire. Look at that, huh? That's pretty sweet. All right, dude, I'm gonna go gather some kindling, get a fire going in here. Why don't you go drill a hole so we can start fishing soon? You read my mind. Oh! The last time we were in Voyagers, we just dipped a line in. It's a little more complicated this time of year. So basically, I wanna be in anywhere from 10 to 20 feet of water. That's where we're gonna find fish like northern pike, walleye, really tasty fish that us Minnesotans love. Just clear a nice space and get all this nice powder out of here. Now, if you're gonna be drilling at or near our national parks, this is the only type of drilling that I'm cool with. Oh yeah, we are through. Look at that. All right, so we broke through the ice. We've got our fishing hole. I tell you, this thing was a lot of fun. It's got some power to it. Now I'm just gonna sit back, enjoy this beautiful freezing day, and cross my fingers. I'm also really hoping that Jack had success with that fire. They say fishing is a test of wills. Ooh. But how much can one man stand? <laughs> We're in Voyagers National Park, hoping to catch a glimpse of the park's iconic gray wolves. But our first priority is staying warm and catching something to eat. One of the things that Colton and I talk about every now and then is the northern way of life. And what that means, enjoying the great outdoors, having to start a fire to keep warm, and really just living simply. Unfortunately, there's nothing simple about catching your dinner, even in the state of 10,000 lakes. Well, 10 minutes. Nothing, no bites, no nibbles. I promised Jack a fish for dinner, but you've gotta be in a spot where they're traveling through. Ooh. Which means I could be out here in the cold by myself for quite some time. No, nothing. It's funny, this doesn't even feel like winter camping to me. This thing is basically like a little house. And the fact that we've got a wood stove is just unbelievable. That's the sound you like to hear. I've got heat. Now for Colton, I can only imagine he's close to catching his limit of fish out there. In about half an hour, thought I had a bite. I think it was just a piece of ice that stuck around the bobber. Really go for some walleye right now. I'm bowed, but not beaten. I promise to fish, and a fish I will deliver. See, it's all about patience. My only hope is Jack is having some success. Whew, it is warm in here. It's very exciting. I can actually take off one of my jackets. Uh. Well, it's been a couple of hours. The feeling in my hands and feet is starting to fade along with my sense of optimism. I haven't even gotten a bite yet. <laughs> Yo! Yo! Did you catch anything? Not a thing. Nothing? Ah, oh, seriously, not even a bite. And I was yeah. just getting ready for our traditional shore meal. Well, it's gonna be a little modified. <laughs> <laughs> Here in Minnesota, a shore meal, or a traditional shore lunch, usually means fried fish with some hearty sides of potatoes and beans. Looks like we'll be sticking to the sides. This is what it's all about. Two buddies out in a tent cooking up some potatoes and beans. Got that right. <laughs> I think we are ready to eat. Nice. Nice traditional shore meal. <laughs> Minus the fish. <laughs> so what's the plan after this? I mean, we're just gonna find a nice spot where we can see as much of the shoreline as possible. And then we're just kind of sitting back and just crossing our fingers. As we learned earlier, gray wolves patrol along frozen shorelines in between islands, targeting prey like rabbits, deer, and even moose. 
We've got to find a spot in view of a shoreline, but far enough away not to spook the wolves. Here we go. So here's what I'm thinking. See that island right there? Yeah. It's all by itself. You've got such a great view. It looks like it gets a little bit higher than we can be on this spot right here. Yeah, and that would give us like basically 360 degree view of as much shoreline as we possibly could see. Okay. I like that. The island provides elevation and the grass cover should help conceal us as day turns to night. And believe it or not, they're not the big bad scary wolves that sometimes they're made out to be. They're very skittish. And if they pick up our scent, hear any of our motion, there's a great chance that even if they're half a mile away, that'll be enough for them to dart out of sight and back into the forest. From here on out, it's absolute quiet. That means no talking, no rustling, and definitely no snoring. He fell asleep. With the temperature five below zero, we're settling in on a remote island in Voyager's National Park to watch for wolves. I've got a feeling it's gonna be a long night. We've been told that utmost silence is essential to not scaring off any wolves in the area. Jack apparently really took that advice to heart. He fell asleep. It's like negative five and we're in a snowbank. How do you fall asleep like that? Wolves are most active at dusk, so we've got night vision goggles to help us scan the shorelines where they head out to hunt. What makes this so incredibly challenging is we're essentially trying to beat the wolf at his own game, being stealthy, being elusive, and we don't exactly have the home court advantage. Wolves howl to communicate with each other and to warn other packs in the area to stay out of their territory. It's not long before a second wolf joins in. We listen to the wolves howling back and forth for about a half hour, and then they stop. We never actually see them, but we feel so fortunate because even hearing them is extremely rare. We got really, really close, and we got to hear two wolves talking to each other. That's a win in my book. I mean, we did it. We blended into our surroundings, and that's a tough thing to do. Look at us. Right now, it's freezing. We're in a snowbank, and we just got done listening to two wolves serenade one another with us smack dab in the middle. That's an incredible experience. It's morning, and we've got 20 frigid miles separating us from our car and one final surprise along the trail. Oh, dude, dude, that's a wolf! Are you serious? That's a wolf! See if you can see him through the trees. He was going up the hill. Oh, Anything? he's gone. He's gone. That was a wolf? That though? was a wolf! Yes! Woo! That was so cool. Man, oh man! Mission accomplished! Oh man. Well, wow. I'm happy. That's how you end it right there. Man, this was a serious expedition. Coming out into Minnesota in the wintertime is no joke at all. Being out here in Voyagers in the wide open space, it was surreal. You felt like you were somewhere else. I mean, this is our home state, and I felt like I was gliding through Antarctica. It was so cool to come out here with the goal of seeing one of these wolves. And how amazing was it last night to be able to hear those guys howl? And then today, just out of the blue, spot one. I mean, when you put everything together, the elements, the cold, the wind, and the fact that this is an endangered animal, it's an elusive animal. And yet, if you put yourself in the right position, you give yourself a chance. The more time I spend in the north woods of Minnesota, the more I have an appreciation for this state. There's a lot of hidden gems in Minnesota. Sometimes you really have to work but if you're willing to put in the effort, you could see something that few will ever get to see. All right, man, we saw a wolf. We rocked Voyagers National Park. Now it's time to dream up the next adventure. Let's do that by the fire. <laughs> <laughs>
Sights and sounds like these have defined this remote corner of Minnesota for thousands of years. Seeing them alive and preserved in our national parks is a privilege worth fighting for. And remember. Hey, if we can do it, so can you. So the next chance you get, go out and rock the park. Everybody, thanks for watching. Make sure to leave any questions or comments that you have. And please subscribe to the channel. There's a lot more to come.